Broadcasting from Studio 202 at the Springit Technology Center in Navasota, Texas, it's NOV Live. Now, here's your host, Michael Gaines. Hello and welcome to NOV Live. I'm Michael Gaines. Happy holidays to you as we come to you here on the show, wrapping up uh, 2021 and bring you a great conversation today uh, about some technology that is applicable uh, for many of our viewers, and I think even uh, for those that are interested in uh, the space of uh, data backup systems for the rig site, I think that many of us can appreciate uh, the technology and uh, some of the conversation that'll be happening today on the topic. So glad you are joining us. So before we jump into our conversation and get to our guest, want to go over to our social media desk with Shelby Dumaine. So Shelby, good to see you today. Happy holidays. Great to see you as well, Michael, and happy holidays to you to you as well. And uh, thank you for everybody for joining the show today. We're so happy to have you here. Um, I always love seeing in the comment section um, all of all of you tuning in. And so with that, if you want to get involved with the show, that's the best place to do it is there in the comments. Um, to start things off, I always like to just see where you're watching. So I already see um, some viewers from Houston. I know this morning in our earlier show, we had people all over Oklahoma, Brazil, Germany. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to see where everyone is watching from. Uh, so that's the first thing. If you want to comment that and let us know. And then throughout the show, if you have any questions um, for our expert on today's topic, or even for Michael, I always love to throw him in the hot seat, uh, go ahead and comment those questions below, uh, whether you're on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, or even our latest platform that we're going live from, uh, Twitter. Wherever you are watching from, go ahead and put your comments in, and I'm in here. That's why I have my screens up uh, throughout the entire show. I'm reading your questions. I'm seeing what you're talking about. And I would love to be able to feature a question of yours on the show for the Q&A that we do at the end of the episode. Uh, so those are some of the ways you can interact with today's show. Uh, in the future, if you're watching any of our past episodes, uh, you can find those at NOV.com slash live. And if you ever have any questions on a past show, you can always email those to us at social media at NOV.com. So those are all the ways. The easiest way, though, for today, if you have a question, is just to go ahead and comment it below, and, and we'll get to as many of those as we can. Uh, but before I go back to Michael, I do uh, want to ask you um, my question this week. It's time for the Rig Geek Post of the Week. Rig Geek's Post of the Week. All right, and if this is your first time watching the show, Rig Geeks is when we ask you a trivia question and you put in the comments what you think the answer is. And at the end of the show, we will reveal that answer. So we're gonna get it up on the screen, but this week's question is, in what type of drilling is it most important to have a backup instrumentation system? So we all know how important data is. So in what type of drilling is it most important to have that backup um, instrumentation system? So go ahead and let us know in the comments what you think. And like I said, I will reveal it at the end of the show. So All tune right. in for that. Yeah, that sounds mm -hmm. great. Yeah, I know you said that uh, folks can ask me a question, but <laughs> I think I'm going to defer to our guest today and see if uh, we can get them a question. But yeah, mm -hmm. certainly always happy to do that as well. Great. Thanks, mm -hmm. Shelby. We'll see you uh, in just a little bit. So as we mentioned at the top of the show, today's conversation is about data backup systems uh, for the rig site. And again, it's a topic that is uh, extremely important, especially in uh, this day and age where data has become ever more critical to uh, central uh, drilling operations and, uh, and the overall uh, efficiency and production on the rig. So to give us more insight and to take your questions today, we have our guest, uh, Mr. Joe Gabash, who is the product line manager for auto drillers and controls here at NOV. So Joe uh, is joining us today in the studio. So Joe, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, happy to have you here. So um, we're gonna kind of dive in. Uh, you know, I know that one of the uh, uh, products and solutions that that we have around uh, data backup is uh, called eSpectrum. So really, just wanted to maybe start out and talk about eSpectrum and and what that is, and and maybe start out at a, at a high level for folks that that may not be familiar. Mm -hmm. 
So eSpectrum is a backup instrumentation system for drain rigs where the need of a secondary system is a necessity to monitor critical drilling parameters similar to the weight, pressure, depth, and flow. This will enable drilling operations to continue in the event they lost the primary drilling instrumentation. eSpectrum gives the driller a secondary view of what's happening on the rig to keep it going without recording any downtimes. This solution is built on a touchscreen HMI and it's represented by a modern user interface. Durer not only sees the data, but also he sees a graphical representation of that data, represented by the actual rig components, similar to the traditional weight indicator that combines hook load and weight on bit on a, uh, in, a, in a single gauge, traveling block that's moving up and down with or without drill pipes, and mud tanks volume. Each spectrum, sorry. Yeah, no, please. Okay, eSpectrum works in parallel with RigSense Electronic Drilling Recorder, or what's known as EDR. Both systems communicate independently with the MD.co data acquisition system known as DACTAN. DACTAN is one of the most advanced and robust data acquisition that can process the data with 100 hertz speed, mm. which means that it can update the data 100 times per second. It's a super fast DAC. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and so, you know, when you're thinking about that I, and, and I'm, I'm certain that uh, the the hardware is is really robust, which I know there are conversations and folks will say, OK, well, you know, if we're using you know really good uh, hardware and systems, why why do we need a backup? You know, what, what is going to be some of the benefits of having a, a backup? Why not just try to, you know, some might say, well, that's that's redundancy. I don't I don't know that I want to have. You know, additional cost or considerations. Why not just have a single single system? How do you how do you talk to that? That's a great question, Michael. Let me give you an example of car's handbrake. Every car needs a handbrake, right, to act as an emergency braking system that can replace the foot brake in case of failures or emergencies. This doesn't mean that the most advanced car car braking systems are of low quality or uh, uh, and unreliable, right? It means that we always need a backup for the life-threatening safety equipment. This is exactly the case with eSpectrum, where the need for a backup is crucial for both safety and performance. So, yeah, and that I, I that really resonates with me, um, and I, I think that makes sense for, for most folks as well. So, you know, when you're uh, looking at maybe some of the considerations uh, that you see around outages or, uh, you know, instrumentation or, you know, data failures. What, what are some of those uh, causes that, that you've seen based on the, the data and insights uh, that you have? So generally speaking, we will be able to categorize the failures into two primary areas. One is going to be hardware and two is going to be some sort of issue with the data or the software of the primary instrumentation system. The hardware, keep in mind that a lot of the components we use with the primary instrumentation system are things that you buy off the shelf. Things that are going into a safe area, such as servers, routers, access points. These kinds of things aren't generally built for industrial applications or the harsh environments of the oil and gas industry. And we see some failure there. In addition to that, some of these components are also susceptible to influence of other networking devices or other components that are on the rig. So, for example, you have a power spike uh, on a generator. It could likely cause an issue with some of the networking equipment. And you know, Michael, if networking equipment goes down, your primary data instrumentation system is likely to be impacted. With the e-spectrum, we've taken two devices that are absolutely made for the oil and gas industry. We've got our zone-rated, hazardous-rated HMI, the human machine interface, connected to our DAC that we built to work and work well and perform in these rigorous environments. That's one failure type. Another failure type, it comes to data, it comes to the fact that a lot of these instrumentation systems are becoming more and more complex which is great. But what complexity with all these added features, you're adding more connectivity. You're adding more bandwidth that these data parts must take. 
and any blip, any issue with that can cause corruptions with databases, can cause outages, can cause all kinds of things. Uh, these instrumentation providers, including us, we do everything we can to ensure 100% uptime and mitigate, you know, these types of data vulnerabilities or outages. But fact is, uh, things happen. And we want to make sure that uh, we've got a backup system just like you would uh, a black box or a data recorder on, uh, on an airplane that's consist constantly going. You know, it's always going to be going so that in the event that there's an issue, you still have your data. And with this, not only is it logging, but it's representing itself so that operations can continue. Right. So, uh, you know, and your, your description of kind of laying the scene and the, the framework uh, definitely resonates with me personally, and I'm sure with many others. Um, likewise, I, I, I know there are probably some folks like me that are they're saying, okay, I'm, I'm building, you know, kind of a, a mental picture, but, but I'm a, a visual person as well. So uh, could you maybe talk about, uh, I don't know if you have a visual that, that shows uh, the e-spectrum display, but can you kind of maybe show that and talk about what, uh, what, that's, what the system displays? Uh, e-spectrum displays the critical drilling parameters to keep the operations going. And these would be things like uh, the weight, the depths, volumes, and pressures. These are the things we, you need to keep that driller engaged in the operations and keep that rig drilling. Please take a look at the screen where you can see the complete list of what e spectrum can display. We have the full list of channels on the screen. So um, I, I, I appreciate the fact that um, you know, you're part of the, the MT, MD Totco uh, team and, and certainly a lot of, of deep history in uh, providing excellence there. Um, it, it sounds a little familiar with uh, some of the other, an, another product in your, your product portfolio. Is that, am I kind of remembering that correct? Is, is there a connection? You, you're absolutely right, Michael. E-Spectrum name is derived from the legacy Spectrum panels that were the primary instrumentation systems back in the 80s. And later they were coupled with RIGSAS to also act as a backup in cases where the primary instrumentation system becomes unavailable. If you remember, uh, spectrum panels were built uh, using large metallic cases with LCD displays and one small keypad to reset or set the different parameters as you can see on the screen. Communication with the data acquisition unit was throughout a 12 pair cable with heavy connectors and glands. The Spectrum panel is an uh, old analog antiquated system, and this version now is a digital solution that is taking advantage of both digitizing the data, but more importantly, getting the data from a very robust data acquisition system such as our DAC 10, and the Totco's DAC 10. So if you are just joining us today, we are having a conversation about data backup systems for the rig site. And our guest is Mr. Joe Gabosh, the product line manager for auto drillers and controls within the MD Totco team. So if you have questions about data backup systems or uh, questions about eSpectrum or anything of that nature for uh, Joe, feel free to put that in the comment section whether you are watching us on LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, or Twitter. And uh, I'll be glad to get your question uh, over to Joe when we get to our Q&A section. So again, talking about uh, data backup systems for the rig site, and happy to get your questions uh, in that space. And we'll certainly try to get those funneled over to Joe in just a few moments. So, Joe, I now want to pivot and talk about uh, maybe some of the benefits uh, uh, that we are looking at when we're uh, looking at the eSpectrum platform over maybe some of the legacy Spectrum panels. So, again, uh, just because of the, the, the history and, and breadth and depth of the uh, uh, portfolio that MD Totco has, I know that there are many that are familiar with uh, the Spectrum panel. So, can we talk about uh, maybe some of of those, those benefits of the e-spectrum uh, offering. 
All right. So there, there are key uh, three key benefits that the e spectrum has over the legacy spectrum panels. One, it's modernized. We're going from an analog system to a fully digitized system. As you can see here on the screen, you have old uh, metallic panels versus uh, a modern uh, HMI. Two, it's smaller going from this huge bulky metallic panel that you know in some cases it's 36 inches wide or even larger to a small 15 inch HMI. And that's up to the end user. It can be small or it could be bigger. Also, the 12 pair bulky cables used to connect the spectrum panels to their DAC are replaced today with fiber optic or ethernet cables with e-spectrum. And finally, the old system didn't log the data. Uh, it just viewed, I mean, it just represented the data and it's just a visualization. The new system not just acts as a display, but also can log the data for more than a week to cover up uh, any data losses caused by the primary instrumentation system. So, you know, one of the things that comes to my mind when I, I see a lot of the uh, opportunities to improve things in, on the rig site is the fact that uh, many times there's a concern that we say, OK, are we going to be complicating things? Um, that's always I know when I get a new gadget many times it's like, OK, well, you know, I want this to, to streamline things. And um, sometimes it makes, you know, I have to add another step. And I know that you and the team really gave that a lot of a lot of thought. So um, how, how do you talk to to, to that aspect? Actually, I was expecting someone from the audience to ask me these questions. Uh, actually, the answer is no, because no, we're not complicating things. Because eSpectrum and RigSense are synced, so the driller doesn't have to do the job twice. For example, driller can either set his wear on bit on RigSense or on the eSpectrum. And again, he doesn't have to do the job twice. Also, eSpectrum was developed in a way to keep everything simple and straightforward for the driller or any other operator. All the channels are located on a single panel display where there is no need to manipulate between different panels or pages, uh, keeping the driller's hands free for him to focus on the more important things. All right, great. Well, um, I think we're going to pivot over to Shelby to see if we have uh, any questions from our audience that we can pose uh, to Joe. So, Shelby? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. We have one. And this is a great question. Um, this came from online. Can it be paired with a third-party data source? Uh, although the system is designed to work and communicate with the MD dot goes that time, eSpectrum can accept data from any data source through Modbus TCP IP. So the answer here is yes. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And then another one. So is this something that's ready to kind of be someone can get now or can can kind of find out more now? Or is it um, is it still, you know, is it basically the, the question was, is this ready? Can can someone, you know, buy it now? To speak? Yeah, we, we are ready to quote the system. Please mm -hmm. uh, visit our webpage at nov.com slash eSpectrum or contact mdtatko at nov.com to learn more. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, um, I think that is it for audience questions that we have right now. Although, you know, if you have one, I say it's never too late. Go ahead and, and put more of those in. But I did want to go ahead and reveal the answer for the Rig Geek question before. So we asked at the uh, beginning of the show, the question is on the screen now. And again, this is another, if, if you think you have really fast typing fingers, you still have a few seconds, I'm stalling for you. Uh, but the question is, in what type of drilling is it most important to have a backup instrumentation system? And I did see a few guesses. The answer is, you know, I need needed, needed a little drum roll. The answer is horizontal drilling. So that is when it's going to be most important to have a backup instrumentation system. So thank you for, for playing with the Rig Geek question. And um, with that, I will give it back to Michael. All right, sounds good. Well, thanks, Shelby. And uh, appreciate, uh, Joe, you joining us today on the show, talking about uh, uh, b data backup systems for the Rig side. I think that was really, really intriguing. And again, for those that are interested, head over to innov.com slash eSpectrum 
for more information. So today's conversation uh, was brought to you from our Studio 202. Again, our guest was Joe Gabash, Product Line Manager for Auto Drillers and Controls. Our social media desk was uh, had Shelby Dumain. Our production team is Weihan Lin and Paul Dufio. I'm Michael Gaines, and on behalf of all of us here at NOV, thanks for watching and for listening, and we'll talk to you again next time.